Hello everyone, my name is Anya Keenan. I'm a developer advocate intern here at Red Hat, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how you can use Podman and Kind, Kubernetes and Docker, to develop your application that's targeting Kubernetes as its runtime environment. If you're not familiar with Kind, it is an open source project that will allow you to run Kubernetes clusters inside of a container engine. This could be Podman, Docker, or others. This is quite helpful for development and testing purposes, as well as running Kubernetes locally in a lightweight fashion. With that being said, if you're using Podman on a Mac or Windows, let's go ahead and configure our Podman machine, the virtual machine, to run this workload. Once in Podman Desktop, to create a new Podman machine, we'll be able to head to Settings and then Resources. Here, when we click Create New, we'll be able to configure a name for our Podman machine and its resources allocation. Now, while Kind is lightweight, we recommend that you have at least two CPUs and at least four gigabytes of memory. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click Create. If you already have a default Podman machine, feel free to go ahead and keep it. But if you'd like to replace the default machine with the new machine we just made, the Kind machine, you can go ahead and do that by clicking yes here. I'm going to say yes, as that'll now be the default machine when you type in any Podman commands on the command line interface. Thanks. Now that our Kind machine is properly created, we see it listed here, and we can go ahead and start it by clicking this button. So now we have our Podman machine up and running, so let's go ahead and start our Kind cluster. Here we'll find a bit more information about Kind and a link to their website. When we click Create New, we'll be able to choose a name for the Kind cluster. We'll be able to choose whether we want it running in Podman or running in Docker, and what ports we'd like it to run on. Additionally, you can choose if you'd like to set up an ingress controller, which will help with the networking, if you'd like secure public access to your Kubernetes service. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to be running the Kind cluster inside Podman, and I'm going to leave the ports to their default ports. Now we're all ready to go ahead and create the cluster. While it's creating the cluster, you can click Show Logs, and you can follow along with the logs to see where we are in the configuration. Under the Kubernetes documentation, they've supplied us with a sample guestbook application that uses Redis and PHP. When we scroll down, we'll see our first YAML file. We can go ahead and copy this name into our code editor of our choice, and we can go ahead and copy everything that, that the YAML file has to offer and put that in as well. Earlier in Podman Desktop, we were able to choose our Kubernetes context, and we chose the Kind cluster. That means any kubectl command we're going to make was going to use that cluster as its default environment. Therefore, in the terminal, when we type kubectl apply dash f and the name of what we want to deploy and click enter, it's going to say the deployment has been created. And when we head back to our Kubernetes cluster, we'll see it's deployed in kind. So back here on Podman Desktop, we can see our Redis application, which is what the YAML file described, is being hosted in Kubernetes kind demo cluster that we just created. Additionally, the command kubectl get pods will allow us to query the pods that are running and verify that our Redis pod is running. Additionally, we can inspect the logs of the Redis leader pod by typing kubectl logs deployment slash Redis dash leader. Here you'll be provided with all the logs from the pod and you'll be able to inspect it and stay up to date with the status and the health. But that's not all. You can continue to extend and develop your application. First, think of an idea of how you'd like to add a new microservice to your application. Then you can head over to Podman Desktop, under images, either pull an image or build an image from your own container file. And then you can go ahead and start that image creating the container. I'll name this test extension. When you go ahead and start that, you'll see it running here in Podman Desktop. And then um, you'll be able to click Deploy to Kubernetes. Here we can see that our default um, Kubernetes context is our kind cluster. And when we click, click Deploy, we'll be guided through waiting for the container. And then finally, our new microservice is running on our kind Kubernetes cluster. 
In this video, we went over how to use Podman Desktop and Kind to make our process to deployment on Kubernetes easier. First, we learned how to make a new Podman machine with certain resources and how to create our own Kind local cluster. After that, we deployed a new workload onto our Kubernetes local cluster, and then we were able to expand our application with a new microservice using Podman Desktop. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you on the flip side.